if they get it done tonight, they would tie the record for most consecutive tourney covers. West Virginia covered 12 in a row, 98 to 2008. You're looking at the uh, scoring margin all time, which is in play. They're 11 and one straight up Final Four history, and then you're you just you're, you're up there with with you know the greats of all time. Always follow the money. Follow the money. That's what I always say. You always follow yeah, the money. Yeah, yeah. This is Follow the Money with Mitch Moss and Polly Howard on VSN. Yet again. So if you spent 30 seconds, not even handicapping UConn games in the tournament. In fact, going back to last year, but nobody would do that if you just did it this year. All you would have to do is have you know talk to a friend, look in the mirror, and say, "Okay, have you watched UConn play?" Yes, I have. Have you checked their recent results? Yes, I have. Okay, I'm laying the points with UConn. It's been that easy. Yeah, and I hate myself because I'm a streak guy, and they they cover every game, and I am not a Martingale guy. But if you've been doing that with the rollover, I mean, forget about it. I mean, it's just that you've won 11 in a row in the tournament all by 13 points. It's ridiculous. I didn't think it was possible what they're doing because the great equalizer is always the point spread. But that, that, that hasn't mattered either. So to go 12-0 and straight up and then ATS and, and then throw in there every win by at least 13 points, they're Ivan Drago. They will break you. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's eventually coming, and you can't stop it. I mean, Arkansas goes, uh, Alabama goes 8 of 11 from 3 in the first half, but they're still down. And still, you would think well, UConn's well, must have been shooting the 3 well. They don't even shoot the 3 well. That's one of the things they don't do well. But it still doesn't matter because they're so efficient offensively and so good defensively. And then just, you know, the run's coming, and eventually they'll, they'll break you down and they'll get to you. And then, oh, okay, they won by 14. And, it's, and you're not surprised. So, and here it is. So they win every game by at least 13 points, and, and now you only got to lay six and a half or seven, uh-huh. right? So only uh, you're against, exactly right. Against a team that was either number two or number three all year long, and oh, by the way, mm-hmm. Purdue, they've covered every game in the tournament too, yes? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Now, so, the other one too is uh, every UConn game has gone under, I believe, which is a surprise. Uh, but to see if that can that can come in again here and they could do a perfect 6-0 and ATS and 6-0 and to the under. But you, this has been the story of the tournament, though, as well, with which both teams have, have won and covered every game. And then how well favorites are doing, but this is this is nothing new for this program, as we've talked about all week. They're twenty-seven and six ATS since two thousand nine in the tournament, and Hurley overall is fourteen and three ATS. But this is this is just silly. It's it's bordering on the absurd that they could go back to back and cover every single game and blow everybody out. Yeah, putting this into perspective, compared to last year, UConn was seven and a half against San Diego State. Uh-huh. The Aztecs were a five seed. UConn was a four seed, but remember, UConn was blitzing everybody last year as well. Tonight, against a one seed, again, top two to three team all season long, they're laying six and a half or seven in the game. Yeah, good tweet. That is wild. Right, well, you can't put it up high enough. I mean, they're, they're covering every game, but that's... So if they, if they get it done tonight, they would tie the record for most consecutive tourney covers. West Virginia covered 12 in a row, 98 to 2008. You're looking at the uh, scoring margin all time, which is in play. They're eleven and one straight up Final Four history, and then you're you just you're up there with with you know the greats of all time. You're going back to back, which hasn't been done since the Florida team. And then if you can also cover and, and uh, this is also about coaching and Hurley. They're thirty three and zero when leading at halftime. That's another one. So it, it's it's just. It's not only how they're they're winning; it's they're making it look easy. This is supposed to be everything we talk about. Bayheim won title in forty five years. Oh, Mark Few with this, yeah, but he never gonna. Okay, only a couple Final Fours. This is hard to do. Calipari, who we just talked about, all the talent he has, getting knocked out. This is hard to do, and this guy makes it look easy. He does. That's the biggest compliment I can pay him in this program. Is that this is supposed to be hard, but for UConn, it's no problem, and it's just. Oh, hum, another blowout. We'll talk to you next game. You know, this does have shades of that uh, repeat champion year for Florida kind of written on it because that year, again, they were loaded. That team had everybody back. This UConn team did not from last year. But remember, they were going against Ohio State and Greg Oden that second year. And, and Greg Oden was the projected number one pick in the draft that year. And he was a force to be reckoned with at the college level. Guy was an amazing center. And he, think about that, going against like Al Horford, uh, Noah in that game, I think he had like 25 and 12. He was awesome. But Ohio State did not have enough, and Florida took him out. 
Now, fast forward to tonight, another Big Ten team. Zach Eady, well, he's not going to be the project number one overall pick, but is a similar force at the college level. So it's Eady, like Odin was against Florida, Eady against this uh, incredible machine that is now rolling with UConn. And your point about the largest scoring margin ever entering the national title game, 1999 Duke. They were plus 126 with the scoring margin going into that game against UConn. And they lost. They were a nine-point favorite. They lost the game outright. 2024 UConn this year is plus 125. That 2016 Villanova team that blitzed everybody and then won at the buzzer Mm -hmm. against North Carolina, they were plus 121. In 1996, Kentucky never really had a close game. They were plus 120. Purdue is plus 98. Yep. The first title game since 1960. Both teams are outscoring their opponents by 19-plus points per game. We had a great storyline here, no matter what happens. And the, the fact that Purdue was able to do this, good for them. You know, this is Virginia part two. You have probably one of the most, it is, it was the most embarrassing losses in tournament history. And you come back and you make it to the title game. And you're, you're impressive the entire stretch. But the big, with Edie going against Klingon and the heavyweights down low, does someone get into foul trouble? And what kind of success does he have? And does, 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 can Klingon hold him in check? And does that spell doom for Purdue? Because and this is one of the few times where you go 7-4 against 7-2, where maybe E doesn't go off and have a monster game because he's going against a powerhouse in his own right. So that'll be tough. Um, and, and, may, and I also think it, uh, it, it leans uh, could be under here because both teams don't push the ball when you see where they are in tempo. And the fact that, hello, happened again, 2-0 Saturday. We've had five final four games in that arena stadium all five have gone under second half Mm -hmm. so i I would point to that uh and look at that as well and you see the total at 145 and a half but yeah you nailed it coming in just keep it simple and it just takes 30 seconds to say yeah i'll lay the points with uconn and you've won every single time yep this is uh to your point paulie dan hurley was asked a great question about comparing last year's team to this year's team um and he said yeah we're kind of making it look easy Jordan's different player than, than Cam and Steph's a different player than Andre Jackson and the bench is a little bit different but you know the culture the preparation the commitment to every aspect of the game so that we keep ourselves as bulletproof as possible um, to, in this tournament which is hard we, we make a hard tournament look easy it's crazy it almost feels like a throwaway comment because mm-hmm. he wasn't being cocky about it He could be cocky all day long if he wanted to, and he would be exactly right. It's a very difficult run that you have to make. It's not easy. As you said, I mean, ask some of the, quote, greatest coaches of all time how difficult this is. Ask John Calipari why he left Kentucky last night to go to Arkansas. Very difficult to pull off. And they are just running through teams like they have no resistance whatsoever. They should not be able to do this every single night. Like, we should be talking about how this is a crazy number, Purdue can absolutely yep. win this thing outright. Seven's way too high, and yet I can't get there with it. Yeah, I know. It's a great way to go out, though. Ken Palm, number one against number two, 34 and four against 36 and three. Purdue's 111 to 12. The two big guys going down, going at it, and uh, it, seems, it seems too easy. Yeah. I mean, if they're going to be laying double digits in all these games and covering, no problem, with the exception of the Alabama game, you, you absolutely lay six and a half. Or seven with you. Well, now we went from the Burns ED matchup to tonight, which is way more fascinating to me. Klingon, who is rising up draft charts every single minute, as you can imagine. I yep. saw something last night where he's up to like number three now as a prospect in the country. Makes sense, right? They're like the 2017 Warriors. The run's coming. Just uh, how long is it going to take? Because here, you know, the run is going to, it took a little bit later than I thought in the Alabama game, but the run is going to come and then you're going to look and what was a close game all of a sudden is going to be sitting 12 or 14. Well, and then it's to start the bus. Is this another potential in-play wagering opportunity tonight where Purdue hangs around for 30, 32 minutes, tight game, they might have the lead and you want to just keep buying in on UConn where it is, here you go. It's, it's going to happen. I have to have faith in this team and I'm going to get a much better number mm-hmm. and I got to bet UConn in that situation. That was the case against Alabama. I had Bama the race to 10, 15, 25. Almost won all three of them. Only won one. They kept that thing tight for a long time. And there's just, yep. at, at some point, these teams run out against UConn. 
It could be the first five minutes of the game. It might be the last five minutes, but it's it's happening. They had the chance. They had to keep hitting threes, but it didn't happen. But yep. that's something that Purdue's going to have to do. But you, I, I don't have to double Edie, though, because I have Klingon, so I'm, I'm good there.